What's up, YouTube? Jeff back again from High on Android, DopeTechDaily.com. And today, I'm here with a quick unboxing and 24 hours impression video on the BlackBerry Priv, as you guys can see right there. Now, of course, the BlackBerry Priv is being sold unlocked from BlackBerry as well. I went ahead and picked up the AT&T variant because AT&T got it first. And, of course, I have a line with AT&T. Now, one thing to note is this phone is more expensive at AT&T. BlackBerry is selling this phone for $699 unlocked. At AT&T, I paid $740. It's about $800 out the door after tax. So be aware of that if you're going to pick it up. Now, of course, as usual with my impressions video, I've already played with the phone because I want to give you guys some impressions after 24 hours. So it's not going to be a traditional unboxing. I took the plastic off already, but I didn't take out any of the accessories or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the, the lid here. We'll show you guys what's inside the box. You can see what comes with the phone. So first of all, you see sort of this ugly orange and white AT&T packaging. That's how AT&T packages all their phones. But on the inside, you can see, first of all, there's the phone right there. Go ahead and slide that out. As you guys can see, I already took the plastic off the phone because I've been using it for the last 24 hours. So I'll set that to the side really quick. See what else we get in the box. You got a quick start guide, of course. Now, this is kind of important because I'll tell you guys a funny story. When I was walking out of the AT&T store yesterday, I was, I was on my lunch. I went there, grabbed it. I was in the mall at the food court. I was trying to go get some food, and I was trying to figure out you know, how to turn on the phone. And I'm so used to using other Android phones where the, volume, the power button is on this side, and I thought that the volume button was actually this, this mute button they have in the center was actually the power button. So I kept pressing it, wondering why it wasn't turning on. Now, of course, I had already seen plenty of you know, leaks of the BlackBerry Priv. I covered this for high on Android and I knew the power button was over here, but it takes some getting used to. Um, so I, I was fiddling with it around like an idiot for quite a while. Uh, finally realized that's the mute switch and I have to press the button over here and everything worked great. So otherwise, this shows you some quick start stuff. You might want this because, you know, this is a BlackBerry phone with Android. So there's gonna be some learning curve here and that's mainly why I took 24 hours. Some people hit me up yesterday on Instagram, like, why don't you unbox it today? Well. I want to go give some impressions, and I haven't used the BlackBerry in a while. So there's some things about this that aren't just Android things. All right, um, something about hope you love your BlackBerry Priv, transfer your data. Who gives a crap about that? Uh, and then the rest of the packaging is kind of BlackBerry-esque. So you can see here, complimentary 12-month direct support from BlackBerry. They give you the phone number. That's definitely a good look. And you can see inside the packaging, now you've got this black sort of matte black packaging that's sort of signature BlackBerry packaging. Normally when AT&T has a phone, you get this ugly orange packaging, which you can see there's the front of the box. I don't know why they make this where you have to open it from, but you see the picture of the phone. Normally when you buy a Samsung phone, you don't get like Samsung stock configuration inside. You just get that white box and you just throw the charger in there. But BlackBerry made them package it sort of nicely on the inside, which is a good, good touch. All right, so we've got a SIM tool here. And of course, if you open this up, you've got some more paperwork, Snapdragon paperwork from Qualcomm, and looks like here you've got your safety and warranty guide direct from BlackBerry. Some more paperwork, SIM tool, I'll add that one to the collection, don't really need another SIM tool. You've got your BlackBerry charger, so yeah, you've got some BlackBerry branding right there on your power brick, as you guys can see. It's a nice touch. Of course, you've got your micro USB cable. No need to even take that out of the bag. I got a ton of them. And yes, here at the bottom of the box, in the side compartment right here, what's this? Oh, it's some headphones. BlackBerry actually made AT&T keep the headphones in the, in the packaging, and you would hope so for $740, they would give you some headphones. So you can see here, you got in-ear headphones. They even give you some replacement tips. So if you have different size ears, you can change out to the small or the large. They got the medium tips installed by default. Some BlackBerry branding right there on both of your headphones. So this is pretty nice. Uh, it's not a Tangle free cable or anything, but it's pretty nice. It's got some inline controls. And you guys can see you got some BlackBerry branding on the inline controls. I always like to see some free headphones in there. And sometimes AT&T and Verizon, etc., they want to take the headphones out of the packaging. So... I'm glad to see that they didn't do that in this particular case. This is my first time looking at the accessories. I left everything in there and charged it up with my regular Samsung charger last night. All right, so let me go ahead and get the box out of the way here. And now let's go ahead and get right into the phone so we can take a look at that. 
All right, so here's the BlackBerry Priv phone. And you guys can probably see one of the things I wanna talk about, which is these uh, notification splats, they call them, BlackBerry users call them. Uh, but let's just have a quick tour of the hardware really quick. You can see here, you got the BlackBerry logo at the top. You got these beautiful curved sides here, kind of similar to the S6 and S6 Edge. Over here, as I mentioned, you've got your volume up and down here. You've got the mute switch in the middle. That's not a power button. That's a warning for me. There's a power button over here on the other side of the phone. So that's how you're gonna turn it on and off. At the top up here, you can see you've got your SD slot. So you can put a micro SD for expandable storage. And here you've got your SIM slot right there. And then on the back, of course, you've got your camera, your module here, the whole camera module. You've got another BlackBerry logo in the center. And of course, because this is the AT&T variant, I've got the AT&T logo on the bottom. This got like a soft, like a grippy, rubbery kind of material. It's not the rubber that's on the LG V10, not quite like that. It's like a textured rubber. This is like a matte rubber finish. It really feels really good in the hand. I kind of like it a lot. And of course, the other thing, we've got the speaker right here on the front, as you guys can see. Speaker grill. Now it is a front-facing speaker, not uh, not dual surround sound, uh, not dual stereo speakers on the front. So, but it is quite loud. Actually, I'll talk about that in the full review some more. Um, and then, of course, the main feature of this phone. There you go. You've got the slide-out keyboard, classic BlackBerry-style keyboard. So, now let me say a few things quickly about the software. So I want to give some quick impressions. So first of all, my impressions of the hardware. The hardware looks fantastic. I think the screen is really nice. Uh, the form factor feels nice in the hand. The speaker, I've tested it out on YouTube videos as well as with music, and it's very loud. Um, the slide out keyboard, it takes some getting used to obviously on the typing side, but BlackBerry fans are gonna love it. One thing that I don't like is my symmetric, or my symmetric, my symbols key right here. The backlight is not completely even, so I might have to get a replacement because for 740 bucks, 800 bucks after tax, I'd like all my keys to be correctly backlit. These keys are backlit, but my keys down here don't have an even backlight, which uh, is kind of annoying me. Uh, the mute button here, I'm not a huge fan of it. You guys, I already told you my story about messing with messing it up with the power, but I don't know that the implementation is all that great. Basically, this takes you right into changing your notifications between being on none, do not disturb priority or normal. But I mean, it's quite not quite as nicely implemented as the OnePlus 2. And you guys know I don't love the OnePlus 2, but that was one thing they did nicely. I'll have more to say about that in the review. But the buttons are overall very tactile. They're easy to turn on and off. Volume is easy to use as well. So that's the hardware tour. Overall, I like the hardware. I think it's a really nice, solid feeling, premium feeling phone for the price. So next, there are some things to say about the software and the camera, some impressions. So one of those things, as I told you guys, are the notifications. So if you're a hardcore Android user, it's gonna take getting used to. You can see I've got my regular sort of card-like notifications that I would have in Android. And then up here, I have these two splat icons. You can see here, I got a message from TK uh, over on my one of my the YouTube videos. Uh, he and I have been having issues with the LG V10 scanner, so if you wanna go check out that video, there's a whole big thing going on with that. Um, but anyway, you can see up top, these apps have splat icons that show you have a Hangouts and a YouTube notification. And so you're gonna get sort of what I think are redundant notifications. A lot of BlackBerry users like these because it shows you sort of what app you have, but you also see the app icon right there. So in my opinion, it's kind of redundant. If you're a BlackBerry user though, you might love this. So you have to tell me in the comments if you're a BlackBerry user, if you really enjoy that. And you're also gonna see that on your home screen. So if we can zoom in right there, you can see Hangouts has got an asterisk. And also, if an, if an app inside one of your folders has uh, a notification, you'll have an asterisk on the corner of the folder. So you see right there, I tap on it and you can see I've got an asterisk on YouTube. To me, that's just not very efficient as an Android user. Uh, and it kind of, I don't know, it annoys me a little bit, kind of makes me want to uh, use a different launcher just to get this to implement, uh, because this is just a little bit of annoying having those asterisks there. Maybe I'll get used to it. I'm gonna give it a try through the full review and maybe I'll love it. But I think a lot of Android users are gonna find that because of the way the notifications are implemented and also some of the splat icons show up here and you can't actually, so if you, you can't actually go through and get rid of them on the home screen. So I can't swipe it away from here. What I can do though, is if I tap on one of the splat icons, it only shows me notifications from that particular thing. Now I do like that, but again, 
The only thing that's annoying is the splat icons themselves are kind of redundant and I can't swipe away the splat icon itself. I kept trying to do that. But of course you can go down here and swipe away the cards. It would just be nice if I had all my YouTube notifications. If I want to see, you know, which ones I have, I tap on the icon. If I then like swipe that away or pressed it, it would be nice if all my YouTube notifications went away and then I was just left with my other splat icons. I think that would be a more reasonable way to implement the splat icons. But again, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Blackberry users, you can tell me in the comments. Maybe this is some great implementation. I'm going to get used to it. This is a 24 hour impressions video. So again, I'm an Android guy giving my impressions from that side. Uh, the next thing is the keyboard. So the keyboard is fine. Um, and of course, if you're a Blackberry user, you're going to love the keyboard. It's got the sort of raised up button. So it's not easy to accidentally type a different button when you're using it. And if you use two thumbs, it works great. Also, you can swipe up just like on a regular Blackberry to get not get suggestions when you're typing. So I can get like the, those come on the, the screen. Also, I can swipe down for punctuation. So I can swipe down again to get some more punctuation options and then go away. So the keyboard's really nice. I'm just taking some time to get used to it because I'm so used to having software keyboard. The one thing I have found that's kind of annoying is that if you want to change to a third party keyboard with the BlackBerry Priv, the physical keyboard doesn't play really nice. So you guys saw all these suggestions and everything that comes up on the screen here. If you use a different keyboard, you're not going to get all the same functionality. So it's got to be the stock BlackBerry software keyboard, which you guys can see there. There's also a software keyboard, but you need to use that one if you want to get all of the hardware keyboard integration uh, and suggestions and swipe gestures. So using a keyboard like maybe the Google keyboard, which I use on most Android phones, it's kind of out of the question if you want that functionality. And that again might annoy some Android users. So the theme here is sort of if you're a hardcore Android user, some of the customization options you love, like you know third-party keyboards, third-party launcher, those are going to be things that will take away some of the stock features that BlackBerry has implemented. But again, this phone was sort of made to work for the hardcore BlackBerry loyalist as well as someone who is used to using Android. So they're sort of drawing, walking a fine line between those two things. Just sometimes it comes up a little short on the Android side so far. And we'll see again how I get used to it. Uh, the next thing is if you press down here, you've got your some shortcuts you can edit. You see I put Phoenix there. This one takes you to the BlackBerry hub, which you can see I already added my, e my email address here. Now, one thing that's a big problem, which some people have already mentioned, is if you add a Gmail address here, you can see my email. If you add an email address that's from Gmail, you can't use labels to manage things in BlackBerry Hub. So you can see all my social emails, all of my emails are all in one list. So if I go into Gmail normally, if I show you guys my Gmail, I manage them, of course, by the Gmail tabs. You've got primary, social, promotions, all the different categories. And it's easy to manage my email that way. But if I go into the BlackBerry Hub, there is no way to sort through uh, using the tabs way to browse your email. So if you use labels or the default Gmail labels, which are social promotions uh, and your primary inbox, those aren't going to translate over here. Now, there are lots of ways to customize your email in BlackBerry Hub, ways to get uh, super specific uh, notifications for a particular type of email. You can even search for a string and then have a particular action like a notification LED. And that's great. I'm going to play with that some more, but it doesn't really integrate beautifully with Gmail labels. So if that's how you already do your email, you may have to change the way you do email if you want to use BlackBerry Hub. And that's probably not going to be most people willing to change the way they do email to use this phone. And then the next thing that I like uh, that I've played with is this uh, shortcuts on the side here. You can swipe over and get your uh, BlackBerry Hub, all of your emails and all of your social stuff from BlackBerry Hub, your calls. You can get your calendar for the day, which I really like. You go down here, you can set tasks, which I really like. And you can also get your recent contacts right there. And then, of course, there's the BlackBerry calendar, which I actually really like BlackBerry's calendar. And that does integrate pretty well with your Gmail calendar. So, so far, that has been a pretty big win. Uh, of course, there's also BlackBerry Messenger. You can see here, if you go into the actual app drawer. You've got three categories across the top, app, widgets, and shortcuts. If you go to shortcuts, you can see all the various BlackBerry uh, apps, your BlackBerry Messenger, your email, text message, everything in BlackBerry Hub, calendar contacts, everything that the normal BlackBerry user is going to love from the business side. Uh, I did set up BlackBerry Messenger. I've never been a big user of it. I don't really even know people that really use 
BlackBerry Messenger, see I've got one invitation, maybe I'll accept that and try it out. But that is there if you're a big BlackBerry Messenger user, you're either gonna love that or hate it. And then the last impression I have here uh, is the camera. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, I took some pictures last night while I was out, some low light shots, you guys probably saw the ones here of my shoes that I took. And those shots were actually pretty good. But the one thing I can say about the camera, I still need to go outside and take some in daylight today. I took a few yesterday and then exported them to the computer, but I haven't had a chance to take very many in good lighting. The camera seems to be pretty nice with the detail and color reproduction, but the shutter speed on this camera is pretty slow. So I don't know if I can take a picture of something here and show you. I mean, it's not super slow, but it's slower than my other flagship phone. So you can see here, you can see there's a little delay before it takes a picture. So just a little bit of delay, and that may be the animation, but you can see there's definitely a delay taking the picture here of the Nexus 6P. And let me take something that's not completely black just to see how we do on the brightness. But yeah, it's just not quite as fast as the Note 5 or the LG V10 on the shutter speed side. But I think if you look at the detail, I mean, this picture has good detail and in good lighting, it appears to be pretty nice shots. So overall, I mean, the camera gets good quality detail, seems to have good color reproduction, but I think the shutter speed just isn't as fast as maybe some of the other flagships. Is that a huge deal? Maybe not. If you're not the biggest camera enthusiast or if you don't take a lot of consecutive shots, it may not be a huge problem. So the bottom line so far with this phone after 24 hours, I would say is from an Android user's perspective, you may have to make some customization compromises if you wanna use the BlackBerry services, which is the main reason for buying the phone, right? If you wanna use the hardware keyboard, if you wanna use BlackBerry Hub, you may have to change the way you normally do things with Android, which means not using a third-party keyboard, third-party launcher, so that you retain all of these features. And also, you're also gonna to have to get used to these splat notifications, or again, you could just completely end that, end all of those features, just replacing this with a third-party launcher. So I'm gonna hold off on installing a third-party launcher. I usually use Nova or Apex until I do the full review. Uh, while well, I might switch halfway and then give you guys an opinion with both, um, but I'll try to use this so I can give you guys a, a true opinion of BlackBerry's launcher and uh, we'll see how we feel about it. The last thing I guess people are gonna ask me about battery life. I've only had one and a half cycles, so I don't know that I can say that much about battery life. I'll go in here real quick and I'll show you guys what I have today. I just took this off the charger before the review pretty much. I've been using a little bit, 44 minutes right there, and I'm down to 85%. That's actually pretty damn good. If you project that out, that's almost gonna be five hours screen on time. Now, my first cycle yesterday was pretty terrible, actually. I took it off the charger after I charged it up. I went out last night around 6 p.m. I came home around 2 a.m. and I had like 39% left. I didn't even use the phone that heavy, but it was the first cycle, and I did take quite a few pictures. I was doing social media stuff, I don't know. But I was in the movie for the majority of the time, so it shouldn't have drained that much. But I don't put too much into the first cycle. And then also, in addition to battery life, people are gonna ask me, how much available storage do you have? Well, I installed a few apps, but I had about 24 and a half, close to 25 gigs right out of the box. I've got 23.86 gigabytes now that I've loaded up some of my apps. All right, guys, so I'm gonna, of course, go beast mode on this. Uh, and we'll see what it's all about. Gonna keep using the BlackBerry services, see if I can get used to the physical keyboard. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I would love to try to get you guys some answers. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter and Google+. The links are in the description. You can check me out writing over at news.highonandroid.com and also at dopetechdaily.com for great giveaways. I appreciate you guys checking out the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.